Well, let's begin by asking ourselves a very simple question. And that question is this. What is a force? And the answer to that is very simple. A force is a push or a pull. If this man pushes on the grocery cart, that push is a force. And even if he came around to the other side and instead of pushing the grocery cart, if he pulled on the grocery cart, that pull would be equal to a force. So a push or a pull represents a force being applied to an object. Another important thing to remember is the object that's experiencing the push or the pull does not even have to move in order for it to experience a force. If this guy pushes on this box, the box experiences the push. The box experiences the force even though the box doesn't move. So a force can be a push or a pull and an object when it experiences a push or a pull, a force, does not even have to move. Well now we know what a force really is. A force is simply a push or a pull. But did you know that there are actually two kinds of forces in nature? That's right, in the universe there are two kinds of forces. The first type of force we want to talk about is referred to as a contact force. And a contact force is simply a force that is transmitted between objects when the objects touch. The objects have to touch. A good example of that would be the man pushing on the grocery cart. He has to reach out, touch the grocery cart, and give it a push, or reach out and touch it and pull it in order to make the grocery cart experience that force. So a contact force is literally that. It's a force in which objects actually have to touch each other. An object, reach out, push it with your hand. They actually come in contact with each other right here. And where they come in contact, that force is transmitted from one object to another. It's a contact force. Well, the second type of force is referred to as a non-contact force. And a non-contact force is a force that is experienced between objects that do not have to touch. And probably the most common non-contact force is gravity. If you hold a ball above the ground and let that ball go, the ball will experience the force of gravity and move downward towards the earth. The ball does not have to touch the earth in order for that ball to experience that force of gravity acting on it. That force of gravity, that invisible force of gravity will cause the ball to accelerate downward even though the ball is not touching the earth. Another good example of a non-contact force would be a magnet. A magnet comes near a piece of iron FE stands for iron and there is an invisible attraction that attracts that piece of iron to the magnet. That invisible attraction you can't see it, it's there, it attracts the iron and the iron does not have to contact the magnet in order for both of the magnet and the iron to experience that force. These objects are experiencing a non-contact force. So remember, there are in nature two kinds of forces. There are, number one, contact forces where the objects have to come in contact with each other and non-contact forces in which the objects experience a force even though they're not touching, such as gravity and magnets and also others such as electrical force, which we'll talk about later.